this is EC201 analog circuits lecture 1 welcome to this course the outline of this course will be as follows we will quickly have an overview of linear networks this is what you have spent a lot of time understanding in the earlier courses namely electric and magnetic circuits as well as networks and systems so we will not spend too much time on linear networks but we will take a brief tour of them it turns out that in practice Nothing in the world is really linear. Everything is non-linear. So, we need to know and understand non-linear networks. Which will form a big chunk of this course. It turns out that the analysis of non-linear networks is not quite as straightforward as the analysis of linear networks and to that end we will introduce the concept of incremental linearity the basic idea behind using the notion of incremental linearity is to make sure that we are able to analyze a nonlinear network using the tools that we have already learnt in regard to linear systems, namely the use of transfer functions, the use of convolution, the use of transforms, and so on, which are in general not applicable to a nonlinear network. But we will see in this course how, over a restricted set of signals, one can actually use these tools fairly effectively. The next thing we will see in this course are examples of nonlinear elements. Like diodes, MOS transistors, and bipolar junction transistors. It is not required for you to be aware of the device physics to be able to understand how to use these devices in circuits. So, don't get too worried if you have not taken the solid state devices course before or if you are taking it this semester what we will only do is to treat the transistor as a black box take for granted its voltage current characteristics and we will focus on how to use these transistors to build things that we want and most importantly this course will focus on the design of amplifiers using MOS transistors and bipolar transistors. And during amplifier design, we will repeatedly use what is called negative feedback and we will extensively study negative feedback as applied to the design of active circuits in this semester. These are roughly the topics that will be covered during the duration of the course. So, let us begin by taking 
a quick overview of linear networks. Let's say we had a black box with some input voltage V in and some output voltage V out. When I plot V out versus V in, I get a straight line like this. Let us say that this slope happens to be 1, which is what I obtained from my experiment. The question now is, is this a linear system? So is this linear? So a lot of you have said it is linear. Let us try and figure out if that is indeed correct. What is a linear system if an input x1 is applied to a linear system, it results in an output y1. If x2 was applied to the system, it results in an output y2. So a system is linear if alpha x1 plus beta x2 results then alpha y1 plus beta y2 for all alpha, beta, x1 and x2. Alright. So, this is the definition of linearity which you already know from earlier classes like electric and magnetic circuits as well as networks and systems. Now, let's see if our system here is linear. Let's apply an input x1 which is say 0. The output y1 happens to be about this, which is say one and a half. Let me apply an input x2 equal to 1 and that results in an output y2 which is two and a half. So what happens when we apply and input x1 plus x2. x1 plus x2 is also 1. If the system was linear, we should have got an output which was 1.5 plus 2.5 which is 4. However, actual output is only 2.5. So, the system is not linear. So, the summary of the discussion is that, so just because you see a straight line, don't conclude that the system is linear. Clearly, this example has shown you that. One necessary condition for the system to be linear is when the input is zero, the output must be zero for the system to be linear. 
So why are we so excited about linear systems? For a linear system, we know from your earlier experience that the response of the system to one input is enough for you to figure out the response of the system for all possible inputs and commonly the special input with which the linear system is characterized is the unit impulse. So once the impulse response of the linear system is known, Everything about the system is known. So, this opens up a whole bunch of mathematical tools which you all mastered in the earlier classes. One, of course, is the convolution integral. And several ways of simplifying the computation of the convolution integral, which are the transform techniques. Among which you have studied the Fourier and the Laplace transforms and so on. Unfortunately, nothing in the world is linear. So, none of these techniques that you have learnt in principle are actually useful because these techniques can only be used for a linear system. For a nonlinear system, you cannot find the output of the system if you just know the response to an impulse because of nonlinearity in the system. So, it is not clear what the use of all these techniques is. This can hardly be a satisfactory situation. You couldn't have spent two years in your uh, bachelor's program trying to understand a whole lot of stuff about linear differential equations and linear systems and linear transforms just to find out in the beginning of the third year that none of these things work for practical systems. So, none of these techniques work for a nonlinear system and all practical systems are nonlinear. So, what do we do? So, let's begin by taking an example of a simple nonlinear network and see the difficulties associated with computing voltages and currents and so on in a nonlinear network. And we will also from there see how one might be able to apply the tools one is used to when dealing with linear systems. In a nonlinear system, when we restrict the class of inputs to a small set. The simplest nonlinear network is one where there is probably just one nonlinear element. So, what is the simplest nonlinear element that you can think of that you have seen in earlier classes? Great, the diode. So, let's take a simple network. Let's say we have a battery with a voltage V1 in series with a resistor of value R1, in series with a diode D1 and we are actually interested in finding the voltage Vd across the diode. We denote the loop current by I and how would we find Vd? We just write Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's voltage law is telling us that V1, which is the battery voltage, 
must be simply equal to the voltage across the resistor Vr1 plus Vd. Clearly, when you have a resistor R1 and a current I1 flowing, the voltage across the resistor is simply I times R1. Now, to refresh your memory about diodes, if a voltage Vd is applied across a diode, some current I flows through the diode and it turns out and this can be derived from the theory of semiconductor devices that I is of the form Is times exponential Vd by Vt minus 1. This Is is called the saturation current of the diode. And Vt is the thermal voltage Kt by Q. It is about 25 millivolts at room temperature. And it turns out that this relationship basically comes from the physics of the semiconductor device and that's not a concern here. Vd is greater than zero. The diode is considered to be forward biased and if Vd is less than zero, the diode is said to be reverse biased in a forward biased diode for vd greater than a few vt we see that exponential vd by vt will be much, much, much larger than 1. So, one can actually approximate the current in the diode as Is exponential Vd by Vt. The current in the diode when it is forward biased is Is exponential Vd by Vt. It is clear that the voltage across the diode Vd is nothing but Vt ln of I by Is. Where I is the current in the forward bias diode, Is is the saturation current of the diode and comes from the physics of the device. Vt is the thermal voltage Kt by Q. So, getting back to our Kirchhoff's law, V1 must be the voltage drop across the resistor which is I times R1 plus Vd which is Vt ln I by Is. So, to find I, one has to solve this nonlinear equation in I. So, you see already that even a single loop nonlinear network with one nonlinear element has already produced a nonlinear equation which in principle cannot be solved analytically, it has to be solved numerically. So, this is the uh, the difficulty associated with a nonlinear network. We were of course expecting something like this to happen because the IV characteristics of the elements are nonlinear. If we had a perfectly linear network, what we would have got would be a linear equation and we would be able to find I by straightforward solution of a linear equation. The same thing can be extended to networks with many, many nodes. In a linear network, one would obtain a set of linear equations in either the node voltages or the branch currents depending on how one formulates 
the Kirchhoff's equations. Uh, in a nonlinear network, one would get a set of nonlinear equations, which one would have to solve, in most cases, using a computer to determine either the node voltages or the branch currents. So, in this case, where when we have a forward bias diode, one has to, in principle, solve this nonlinear equation given here. However, a quick hack or an approximation is to use the following observation. It turns out that when you plot the characteristics of the diode, so if I plot I on the y axis and VD on the x axis, the characteristic of the diode is exponential for, for a forward bias condition and kind of saturates to minus Is when it is reverse biased. If you kind of try and approximate this characteristic, a zeroth order approximation to the diode characteristic can be gotten by making an approximation like this. This is called the cut-in voltage of the diode. and is typically about 0.65 to 0.7 volts for the usual values of Is used in practice. In other words, the voltage drop across a forward bias diode is approximately V gamma, which is about 0.65 volts. So, with this approximation, perhaps one can actually analytically obtain I, which is V1 is I R1 plus V D, which is approximately 0.65 volts, which means that I is nothing but V1 minus 0.65 volts divided by R1. Okay, I will stop now. We will meet next class.